in a show of hands. How many people here, how many of you had a problem with their identity in the past? In the last one? In the past, at any time in your life you had a problem with your identity? Always. Always. <laughs> so a lot, a lot. I'm even willing to bet I would say the whole room, maybe mostly everyone. So, identity in 2022 and today's globalized and industrialized world have become uh, a murky concept, a tough concept to handle. Uh, several concepts that we used to view as solid uh, no longer are. Many concepts such as statehood or nationalism or patriotism, um, religion, identity, no longer make a lot of uh, sense or they don't give us a lot of belonging in today's world. That is not to say that identity struggles are new. Um, poets and artists have been making art pieces since thousands of years on struggles of identity. But uh, you can tell quite easily that for the last 60 years or so, identity struggles have exploded and they have increased exponentially. Um, my name is Ashraf Salim. I was born in 1999. I was born in Saudi Arabia, and I am from Syria. Um, that makes me both a Generation Z and also an Arab diaspora or an Arab migrant. Two communities that are very infamous for their identity struggles. And I've struggled with my identity. Um, I've spent a large portion of my life um, struggling with many labels that were given to me, struggling with many concepts and identities that were put on me. Um, <clears throat> there's many, but for example, let's take uh, statehood, a concept or, or one's nationality. Never really m made much sense for me. Um, for example, this is a map of Syria, these are the borders of Syria. Um, which unfortunately were actually drawn by the French Empire in World War I. So they do not reflect the cultural or ethnic demographics of the area. And I always thought, right, I always thought, so this is the southern border of Syria, right? Which is literally a straight line in the sand, like straight. Why is it that by pure fate, coincidence, luck, whatever, if I was born like here, right, 10 meters above the line, then I'm a Syrian. I get a Syrian passport. But again, by fate, coincidence, if I'm going 10 meters below the line, I'm an Iraqi. Wow. And these are two facts that can change your whole life's course wow. and your passport. So, this identity, I never really accepted it. I never accepted um, or felt very proud to be a Syrian or a Saudi or many other identities. I came to Cyprus in 2017. And in Cyprus also I spent a good portion, maybe my first year here, again struggling to fit in. Struggling with my identity or struggling to belong. I, I, um, I jumped from one group of friends to another and I couldn't really fit in and I didn't know what kind of person I wanted to be or what kind of identity I wanted. But it is also in Cyprus, the same place, that I realized something very important. I realized that you can build your own identity. You can create it, you can mold it and shape it with yourself. And you do not have to accept the identities that were given to you. How did I uh, come across this, this, this fact and this realization? But of course it's a very important thing. Just because you can create your own identity does not mean you can be anything you want to be just like that or forget anything. For example, um, I, like I said, not, uh, not the most nationalistic person on the earth. Um, still, because I'm a Syrian, every time I travel, I get stopped for security reasons. So, there is baggage you cannot get rid of. But what did I do? How did I come across this realization in, in Cyprus? I joined a community. And I've been involved in some form or another of community work since 2015. But in 2018, I joined Voice Cyprus, um, which stands for Voices of International Students in Cyprus. 
And it is an organization dedicated to be in a community and to provide a community for international students in Northern Cyprus. It is an organization that tries to make um, international students during their stay in North Cyprus makes North Cyprus more like a home and not just uh, a foreign place. What did I discover? I discovered in my time in Voice, in my time in this community, in this organization, that, um, I mean, here I was an uh, international student in a foreign, uh, in a foreign land that did not necessarily belong or have a strong sense of identity. Suddenly here I was, with time, of course, and with work, surrounded by people, surrounded by a group of people who were working day and night alongside with me for the same values that I believed in. And suddenly I felt like I belong. Suddenly I wake up one day and I go to work and I have my team members and I have my community and I have my people and we are working and we have certain values. We are believing in activism. We are believing in the value and the spirit of giving without expecting anything in return. We are believing in the value of helping people. And you know what? This is my identity. I created it and now I am extremely proud of it. With time and with work in this community, I defined myself through these values that I decided I want to be. The value of giving, the value of activism, the value of helping others. These are values and these are identities that now I am very proud to say, yes, this is me. And these are values I was not just born with, I was not just automatically given, I worked hard for them and I became them with the help of this community that I was in. Just some pictures and some work and voice Cyprus. This is me when I joined, I was in the media team and this is me a couple months ago. I have not a present. And I mean, the summary of today's talk, I, I want it to be as practical as possible. I want you, if you are having struggles with your identity, I want you to leave this room and have at least a, a footstep into what you can do to resolve the struggle. And of course, any advice I'm given is subjective. It's my own personal experiences. It doesn't necessarily mean it's objective and going to fit you, but at least, it's a, at least try. I have three advices that I'm going to give, and I really, really hope that they can help at least one person in the audience today. And first and foremost, and the foundation of anything before you continue is you need to reflect. Please ref uh, take a moment, take a couple of days, take weeks, take months, as much as you want. Reflect first, who are you as a person right now? Are you, uh, are you satisfied with the identity you are right now? With your nationality, with your whatever it is. Do you like how you are represented? Secondly, Reflect on what do you want to become. When people hear your name, what do, they, what do you want them to think? What kind of identity do you want to be? When you reflect on these two things, my second and most important advice, as I said, join a community. Join a community, join a community, please. It can be a sports club, it can be an organization, an NGO, a community, no matter what it is. But usually, like, volunteer organizations are better than a job or a company. In a community, it is very, very likely and very important that you're going to be surrounded by people who share the same love that you have. You are going to work with people and, and discover bonds and discover experiences and create solid bonds that with time and with effort and with dedication, they are going to give you back same as you give it. And they are going to create an identity for you. Finally, explore. And what I mean by explore, just go out there. You want to travel, you can afford to travel internationally, travel locally, go inside your own city. It does not have to be expensive. Go to your old city, go to your neighborhood. Even that like elderly neighbor that you have, go and meet them, have a sit with them, have a cup of coffee with them. Learn to their experiences. Why? Because when you are doing that, you listen and you hear some valuable wisdom, valuable experiences. You discover new cultures, discover new societies that's very, very likely going to give you a sort of um, understanding of, of, of life as big as it is. And that's, it's not just all about you. And it's also going to give you a sense of what you want in your life and what you want your identity to be. 
Before I run up, if there's anything you can take from from today's today's talk of my talk, don't be forced into boxes. Don't be forced into labels that were created to you by society. Instead, build your own identity. You can create it and you can work for it. Go out there and build it. And the most way, at least for me, that you can do this is through community work. So build your identity, enjoy your community. Thank you very much.